All right, last team I wanted to hit on here, Shane, real quick. Let's kick it all down to the Plains, where uh, the Auburn Tigers, they had their first scrimmage of the spring. And, you know, I don't have a lot of details on, on how the scrimmage went at this time, but uh, I know Zach Calzada did not participate in it, from my understanding. He's a little banged up, but uh, according to Coach Harson, he you know, engaged in all the meetings. And I would still say at this point in time, despite the fact Calzada – is not good to go from a physical standpoint. I still would consider him the front runner to win that quarterback competition. Now, T.J. Finley, maybe he makes a move. Mm-hmm. They brought in an Oregon transfer and uh, uh, Robbie Hansford, I think is his name. And, mm-hmm. you know, they got a freshman down there. So we'll see how this this goes. But they did lose Demetrius Davis. He transferred out. He was This was one of the last – quarterbacks of the Gus Malzahn and Chad Boris year. So, you know, you hate to see him go. He was he was one of the most prolific high school quarterbacks in, in the state of Texas yeah. history, but uh, just never really given an opportunity in college football. And, and I'm not saying that, uh, you know, he may go another school and have great success, but it just ain't going to be at Auburn. But one thing I did want to hit on, Shane, because, again, this Auburn is another team where – who the hell knows what to make of them? I mean, they almost had the coach fired about a month ago. You've, you've had players in transferring in, transferring out. Mm-hmm. We're, we're all over the place. But what we do have now at Auburn is we have two coordinators that Brian Harson has worked previously with, guys from, from his Boise days. And according to Brian Harson, everybody's on the same page. We're, pull, we're all pulling in the same direction. You know, this is a little bit coach speak, but – Based on what we know, what was going on at Auburn last year, it could be a 180 degree difference between uh, what we had with Derek Mason and Mike Bobo and what we have with uh, the new coaches down there at Auburn. So let's kick it over to Brian Harson. Can you talk about, in addition to building a team this spring, you've got a coaching staff with some new faces on it. Yeah. Getting everybody working together smoothly. Yeah, well, I would say that that's been um, – handled really well I think with our coordinators number one um, you know you go back to all right coach Brumbaugh on the on the defensive line I sat in coach Brumbaugh's meeting yesterday and I told the players this too it was one of the best meetings I've, I've been a part of and how he was teaching the guys the information the examples and so I left that meeting room I was very impressed with what he was teaching and, and the way he was teaching it um, coach Robinson being around him uh, when I interviewed him, you know, here's a here's a good young coach that his dad's been, a, you know, his dad's a high school coach. He's been around the game his whole life. You can tell when you talk to him. Um, awesome to be around. Great energy. The players love him. Recruits love him. Um, he he gets it. And so, uh, and he's a guy again that is going to come in and do his work and and have himself prepared. Uh, Rock, he's been doing this a long time. He's got a lot of experience that shows up in the meetings when he's in front of the whole entire team on special teams. He's got a great way of, of coaching players and getting the most out of them. Um, a little thing today, but I, but I told our players this, our scout team, when we have guys go out there and play the scout team, usually they're, they forget. They, they don't show up, right? You're, you're screaming for guys. You're trying to find them. Didn't happen today. It's a little thing, but I think that goes back to organization and just a coach making it important and those guys actually doing it. So it's a small thing, but uh, it makes a big difference. You know, on the offensive side, Coach Keesaw, I think he's done a really good job of just keeping that room organized. Uh, we have some analysts and some GAs that are new here, um, but they pay attention. And with Ike Hilliard, he brings a lot of experience. And, and the one thing about Ike, Ike's learning the things that we do. So he's still in that phase right now. He didn't know everything about what we've done. And these guys on the offensive side have been together. And so he doesn't know all that yet, but he figures it out. And if there's something that, that he didn't know, he's such a low ego, high output guy. It's like, hey, let's just make an adjustment. We need to change this, make an adjustment. And then when you get talking ball with him and the, the different offenses he's been around and the different coaches, that guy knows ball. He knows. You were talking about the practice, Mike. You were talking about that practice. And, and I don't know if you heard, but I heard it was a fantastic practice. <laughs> I mean, probably, probably the best practice ever practiced before. I mean, since the a lot of people compare it to the 1972 Miami Dolphins practice. You know, when Don Shula came out there, that's just what I'm hearing. 
that's the kind of practice they had. So I, I, I think maybe we're sleeping on these Auburn Tigers, baby. <laughs> Colin Coward Shane over here, but uh, <laughs> but you know, let me ask you about that. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm not trying to. You know, we never want to bury a team before they play, but with you know, we've said at nauseum, Auburn's schedule out the gate is relatively easy. You know, for for an SEC yep. schedule, and here we got coaches well, who are read, familiar read with the. Uh huh. Can you read the first few games just so because yeah, yeah. I don't have one in front okay. of me. So here's here's who we got right out the gate here, Shane, for the Auburn Tigers, Mercer. I mean, come on, that's that's gonna be a damn come on, that, that's, that's murder. San Jose State. Uh huh. Penn State, but that's at home. Mm. Missouri, again at home. LSU, who you beat last year, at home. Then it gets a little tricky at Georgia, at Ole Miss, <laughs> Arkansas. Okay, but we'll, we'll hold off there. But I'm yeah. saying those first. We're just worried about out of the gate here. <laughs> those first four or five games, I mean, hell, they could be four and one, five and zero. Oh. Could be. Could be fired. I mean, there's a lot of things. That's the. I mean, come on. I, I just. I'm being a realist, Mike. This is. I mean, how many new coordinators are down there? And, and, and it's just like, do you really have confidence right now to say Auburn's going to come out and potentially be five and one or six and zero? Oh? I, I just. I don't see it. I, I don't. I mean, I'm thinking about that Mizzou game. I'm thinking about that Penn State game. There's a, there's a lot of question marks. Yeah, obviously they're going to hit the first two, and they got to hit the first two. They cannot. They can't do like they did last year and, and let these 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 shit teams. Uh, what was it, Georgia State? You know, I should, mm-hmm. I know them well. You know, we can't have games <laughs> like that. You know, they, this is one of those games that they just got to come out, punch them in the mouth and fine tune this thing because it does ramp up real quick. And if Auburn's going to make some noise and if Brian's going to get off that damn hot, hot seat, you know, they, they can't afford, they can't afford any mistakes. Even all, even with these, these cupcake teams. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. But, um, I'm just looking for silver linings here, Shane, because I don't, I don't know how promising next season is going to be for the Auburn Tigers, but I will tell you this, mm-hmm. Shane, if we are low on them, if the national media is low on the Auburn Tigers, they may just win a national championship because that's how it goes <laughs> down there on the plains. You know, we, we write that's them right. off, they're elite. We say they're going to be good, they're god-awful. So, Absolutely. <laughs> Let me, do I have to tell you about Vegas again? I mean <laughs> – <laughs> so I was trying to end the show on a high note. Shane's taking us out on a low note, but uh, you got anything else here, brother, before we, we, uh, we end the show? No, I knew it was going to be a good pod. Mike sent me over three clips. One was a Vegas one was pizza. So I was like, man, this is going to be a good show. <laughs> now he's got me hungry and wanting to gamble. So, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, man. we got some serious news. we got spring games cranking up. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's just, I don't know, like you said, it feels like we can finally close the door in basketball. Unfortunately, uh, SEC will not be taking home the championship trophy this year, but we all know who's going to be carrying home a football trophy at the end of this season. So it is going to be an SEC program. It's going to be one of these 12 teams that we're talking about, or 14 teams, sorry. Let me do that again. I forget how many teams we got now. And it's going to be <laughs> – maybe edit that too, man. Sorry, it's been a while. That you can tell I haven't pod in a few years. We added two teams. But let me do that again. <laughs> Shit. Well, but I know it's going to be one of these 14 teams. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I, I love talking about it. Uh, just keep the news coming, baby. That's what I like. This is real content. Absolutely. And I'm going to try to line us up, Shane, this week. Multiple interviews. Hopefully, at least three to c- go around the SEC. So, uh, I love uh, when I get to do that. But – that's all I got, Shane. Uh, now I'm stumbling through this one. But, <laughs> hey, brother, that's all I got on this episode of the show. I appreciate you hopping on the line. I appreciate each and every one of you for sticking with us during the off season. We'll catch you on the next one. All right, real quick. Papa John's, Little Caesars, Pizza Hut, or Domino's. You got to eat one for the rest of your life. Which one are you going with? I think Domino's. Okay. I heard a great joke. Uh, I went and saw a comedian, Tim Dillon, over the weekend, Shane. Yeah. Little Caesars, he said, their pizza's so bad, their slogan is, it's hot. And that's all they got. <laughs> <laughs> that should be our slogan. It's daily. <laughs> Oh, geez. 
geez. No, that is, that is true. They tried mixing it up, man. I went in there and listen, I've, I've, I've been there before. Okay. I know a guy. So <laughs> I go in there and they've, they've kind of, I mean, it's not just pizzas anymore. They got breadsticks. They got terrible wings. Um, trying to think what else they got. They got all kinds of little stuff. I mean, they, it's, 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 it's a, it's a fantastic marketing ploy because you come in for a $5 pizza and you walk out with $20 worth of shitty food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unless they're sponsoring us, then pizza, pizza. <laughs> Oh man. All right. Well, let's wrap this up, brother. Um, good job. <laughs> good job on today's podcast, Mike. And, uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Go balls. Oh, perfect. <laughs>